ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We haven't left, we haven't quit. Mm. We're back once again. Um, it's me and Nate here on episode 52 of the Away Day Show. Um, just need a bit of time off on Monday. No Premier League football, but we're back to discuss at least even behind international yep. football. It's back. Um, and back for a little bit before the big stuff starts. Yep. Before the, the final start. stretch. Yes. Begins, yeah. so. Um, so I like the fact that we're episode 52 because now they're the odd... Yeah, Monday one we've, we've, we've leveled it back out. Yeah, we're yeah. Even now, <laughs> we're so even. we'll get all the episode 100. And, yeah, uh, we'll, get the, we'll get the big time episodes. <laughs> we'll get the big ones. So. Do we invite them on? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do we do, 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 do it? No, um, no. Nah, absolutely pumped to be back. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was saying before on a fair international breaks, I feel like I lose touch with the game a little mm. bit because it's, I'm not staying up and watching friendlies. Believe it or not, I don't, I'm not that committed. But um, mm. seeing the odd highlights here and there, We've got a lot of young players to talk about in this episode. Yep. Truck got a list a few um, talk about in terms of the final stretch and also for the Cop America and Euros to come up. Um, before we get into it, anything really excite you that we're not discussing uh, in this episode? Um, nothing really, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually thought it was a relatively like kind of entertaining international break. Like mm. usually I don't pay attention Absolutely. to it at all. Maybe it was because obviously we're doing this. I yeah, paid, but enough. usually I do sort of pay a little bit more attention to it. But I feel like there was like you could talk about a lot of the teams and like yeah. a lot of questions about a couple of the teams and yeah. um you know some really good games as well yeah. like England Brazil and yeah. England Belgium Spain and and Brazil yeah, went at it was. and Colombia Spain like, there were some good games so um yeah I thought you know it was actually a pretty entertaining as far as it was yeah. international break so. um and quickly, I didn't actually put it in our notes, but I want to discuss it. <laughs> Obviously, the teams that qualified. So, end up, these are the final groups for the Euros because we'll be mainly covering the Euros over the summer. Yep. Germany, Scotland, Hungary, and Switzerland in Group A. We've got Spain, the group of death. So, Group B, the group of death, Spain, Croatia, Italy, and Albania. Oof. Good luck trying to get that's, out of that one there. That's a very good group. Um, yeah. Uh, rest in peace for Albania as well. <laughs> yeah, no. um, they, I mean, they could be the surprise. You, well, you never know. You never know. You never know. They can always cause some problems. Uh, group C's: Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia, and England. So another tough group to see how that one all pans out as That's well. That's just a battle for second. You'd you think, England, but mean, Gareth Southgate. England, you never England know. always get these relatively easy kind of groups. Then they get knocked out in the quarters. Yeah, true. <laughs> Southgate ball. Southgate ball will not get you that far. Yeah. Um, group D. Poland, who qualified, Netherlands, Austria, and France. And that's that's a, good, a tough that's group. That's a good group, yeah. Yep. Lewandowski going up against Virgil van Dijk. Mm. Nice little combo there. Yep. Mbappe van Dijk. Um, group E, Belgium, Slovakia, Romania, Ukraine, you qualified also. Yep. Um, and then Group F, which, gee, it's a free hit for Portugal. They've got Turkey, Georgia qualified last mm. night. Um, Portugal and Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Czech Republic, so. Bit of a free hit for Belgium as well. And yeah, Portugal, Belgium, so. yeah. I, I, this is Belgium's last chance, I reckon. They've been numbered like so, top three in the world now for so long and just like haven't it. delivered. Like that's, just, that's mad, isn't it? They feel like perennial yeah. like um, bronze medal match sort of teams. Mm. Like, I feel like they're always in that bronze medal game where no one watches it because it's the day before the big one and it's just exactly. like, it's just, they've never Weird, gotten isn't there. isn't it? Yeah. Kevin De Bruyne, like, Romelu Lukaku. Not even a final. Like it's, it's yeah. like, like Croatia beat them to a final. You know, mm. Croatia got, in this generation, Croatia have got Croatia to a final. Croatia have been miles better yeah. than... And <laughs> yet they're, probably ranked, they're ranked like 10th in the world. Yeah. They don't even... Yeah. Mad, so. Belgium in number one, number three. Number, like they've always been around. Mm. It just, yeah. I think this is their last... Even the World De Cup. De Bruyne's think, last. Yeah. Lukaku's last. Um, who else has been there? What, they've still got Vertonghen still going around. Maybe still hanging around. Yeah. yeah. Um, dude, the midfield just... I don't know. Mm. I just don't know where that's. De Bruyne or bust, isn't it? It feels like it. Yeah. Trust sides there. Even as well Lukaku, you can't trust. So. Oh, you can't trust him, but he always has a turn up for Belgium. In I think way, as yeah. a United guy, yeah. as a <laughs> like in just following the in his career, he always like he always says awful for club, mm. pop up for country, and this one last night the tra- little Travello yeah. assist. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was ridiculous. Yeah. And for a big guy like him with his you know trampoline first touch, I'm like. Wow, I know. That's, that's, I, I didn't know he had that in his in his locker. To be honest, I don't think he. I don't think he knew he had it in his uh, locker. No, he just sort of booked it, it out. Like Mo Salah s with the the yeah, Travella, so. Ridiculous. I mean, if that's if that's the Lukaku that Belgium get, then you never know. Go all the way, go all the way, <laughs> all the way. Lukaku, so Lukaku, Lukaku. We we won't see. We won't see what happens. But yeah, very excited for the Euros. I'm like, oh yeah, actually, I'm very popular. Yeah. I'm. I will I'm have there. kits. I will have a proper. Otherwise, like, I'll rent him some because I, I, I got. <laughs> I'll put it on TikTok at some point. My kid collection is strong for these upcoming international good, yeah. um, period of summer. Um, let's get into a big talking point, I guess, of the week in terms of supposed to be last week. We're going to do it this week. Um, 
it's sort of rolls off first. We've been talking about international break, but um, yeah, it, we've come to this break here without Messi, without Ronaldo. Um, obviously, Ben might decline to be in England mm. squad. Um, Saka's gone and faked an injury, I think. To all, the, of like, to, all of Man City's yeah. players. Um, Man City's players have dropped Nunes, out. I think Nunes isn't playing out, either. Yeah. Um, who else? Gabriel for Gabriel, Brazil. Yeah. So all, obviously the big, all the big Prem guys are missing. Mm. And it sort of makes me think we are now, oh, what is it, maybe two months away from this tournament starting. Yeah. June, July, I think it yeah. starts. So we're, yeah. we're very close, two to three months away from it starting. Um, we're playing friendlies. I get the qualifiers, I understand that. Yeah. But we're, are we really playing friendlies 10 games into a Premier League title race, 10 games into a Syria, Bundesliga top four race, mm. um, in a La Liga title race as well. We've all got 10 games to go. Do the players just need a break? Like We see how many injuries have happened yeah. since the World Cup. Um, what was it now? Almost two years ago now. The amount of hamstring injuries Inc. went up like 130% like mm. in terms of just soft yeah. tissue injuries. Is it time we just cut some of the international breakout and just have some of these rest players? It's hard. It's hard, isn't it? Because obviously the managers themselves need to have these friendlies in a way because they need to look at what players work, yeah. what players don't work, different systems, players need to gel and, and stuff mm. like that. Um, but like I, I, I think we need to get rid of some of the, the earlier international friendlies yeah. that we have during the season. Yeah. I understand the later ones because you're getting closer to the tournament. Big tournaments, you, you, yeah. You need them. And I actually think having the international break now was was actually good for like t- a lot of teams. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, some players can go away if they're not on international duty. Yeah. And if they are, they're not going to play every every minute of, <laughs> yeah. of every game, right? So I think the amount of international breaks at the start of the season, some of them you don't need. Like they're just pointless, some <laughs> of them. But towards the back end, I think, I think now is is perfect a, time a, of it. there's no like perfect time to kind of have it in a way, yeah, yeah. but like you have to have it obviously. But um, yeah, I just think that yeah, I think the breaks at the start just some of them are just pointless. Like they're just ridic- stupid friendlies that you just don't need. It's a classic. Um, your four game into the league season, and then all of a sudden yeah. you're away for two weeks because and then even then like you come back for like two three weeks and they're back, back again. again. Yeah, it's like at the, yeah, you're right. At the start, it feels over the top. Yeah. Because before Champions League starts, it's almost like the FIFA feel like they can just pile games in there. Mm. It's just a bit like killing the league season, a little bit about it. Yeah. And I think the other thing as well, like this whole Nations League, like I know it's yeah, like it connects rubbish. with qualifiers and I was like, uh, who cares? Like yeah. I remember the final, the re- most recent final, like the Netherlands, Spain, I think it was, or like Croatia, something like yeah, so, yeah. But like no one cared. No one cared it was on. No one cared who won it. I don't even I don't think Spain won in the end. But like, I don't think the players even really care that much. In you a don't way. get like, like the the winners badge or anything for it. You just yeah, it's no. just not the, like it's just one of the, like those things. You're like, do we really need to add strain on the players? Because yeah. it just feels like since that last World Cup, and obviously it was a great World Cup and it was run well, but it being in the middle of the season, it feels like everything now is just being like bundled up, Shuffled mixed around. around and yeah. It feels like we're just cramming internationals twenty four seven. Um, Obviously, I understand because it's a mixed bag. This was obviously prepared before we went to the international break, this segment. Um, and obviously, it's delivered since we've been on the international yeah. break. But you are missing the big names. And I know yeah. as fans, you uh, as like a, let's put an issue, the 15-year-old kid or you want to go to the, watch yeah, the England team play, but they're playing, you know, Lewis Dunk at the back and, mm. you know, they're not, Harry Kane's not there and, you know, Saka's not there. Do you really want to go watch that team play? That's yeah, arguably five of them are probably going to be playing in the Euros. Mm. It's like that. That's the thing. Like yeah, it's right. just for the manager's purpose. It's isn't it? Like managers. now, Southgate knows why like, Lewis Dunk isn't good enough. <laughs> ben Chilwell isn't good enough. You should know that already. Co <laughs> manager <laughs> is now yeah hundred percent good enough to start. Mm. For, so obviously, it's important for the managers, but it's you know it's just in it's just in general the the players are you know as you said there's just more and more injuries happening, mm. uh, more soft tissues, more sort of hammies going. You know yeah. like we've seen it with. With Pedri and like, yeah. you know, McAllister picked up an, a knock against Sheffield, which was just it just came out of nowhere. nowhere yeah. But because of the amount of games that he's played, it, it mm. happened, and you know we've seen it with with every player from every team. It feels like you know. So obviously the thing with like Ben White as well. I, I don't know if it's if that's down to like the manager he, because yeah. if 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 
if Mikel Arteta was the England coach, <laughs> he'll be at Harvey. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. is I don't know. It's it's a weird one. It, it's hard to talk about in a way. Yeah, it's it, it's a strange. The one. managers need it, but no one else wants it. So it, I don't get that, Ben. Well, I do, but I don't in the same way that like it seems to me, and we don't really understand it because it's, it's not a big deal here in Australia. But mm. I think it'd be obviously a massive deal to pay for your country. But in England, it's almost like forget like knighthood. You'd rather play yeah, like the like for like, your country. Like yeah. you see, like Bellingham last night, like giving it the biggins for a friendly, mm. you know, equaliser, even a winner yeah. at Wembley, and he's talking about he's overcome a Wembley curse, and it's yeah. like it's a friendly. I'm thinking like really, but it's obviously yeah, it means a lot to these players. And obviously Benoit is a bit of a different character. The fact that he said he never really he doesn't watch, watch football, yeah. doesn't like it, but like to play for your country mm. must mean something. Just as an individual, as a person, to represent mm. your country in something. And it being your sport of choice, surely you want to do that. And that says a lot either about him or about Southgate. It's got to be Southgate. But, and it makes right. sense to be Southgate, but yeah. all the other players seem to respect him at least. Like, Yeah. I don't, it's I don't maybe, maybe it's just Maybe it just doesn't mean as much to yeah. play for your country in a way. But it, I mean, it's weird to say because we would... Just, we would do anything. You'd die to, for the badge. You know, exactly, you'd die for the badge. <laughs> yeah. You know, the good old Socceroos. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the whole Ben White thing. I think he was spotted in like Hawaii or something. Of course he was. So the whole thing, I don't know if he was said he was injured or he was too tired to so go. Some like rubbish that. excuse that he said. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a weird one. It'll be interesting to see what Southgate does with him. Does he does he even pick him when you've got a guy like yeah. Joe Gomez who's playing incredibly played well. well. Yeah, he played well for yeah, England. Played well for Liverpool. He plays great for Liverpool. Um, yeah. And he's going to get a lot of minutes now because Robertson went down again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just going to be interesting to see what he does with him. Um, but, yeah, I mean... It's funny old conundrum. Even, uh, even some other players missing, like obviously Gabriel Brazil and yeah, that's Nunes a big Uruguay. Yeah. Like it's... You know, I, I assume Nunes was genuinely not 100%. Because he loves to play. Because he loves to play. <laughs> yeah. And for Uruguay, like he's... Been mentored by like Suarez yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Even yeah. it just feels like more. This is happening more often. Players are and, just coincidentally picking up these injuries. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I've always said, and maybe because again, I don't get a first-hand experience and understand it, but I'd always rather win a Champions League myself. Mm. I know that sounds like Antonio always said. He reckons that is the most deluded thing of all time. But that's just me, right? As a in a country that you know doesn't really do well, but I absolutely love I'll World Cup. Like, oh, you'll yeah. see me there, beer everywhere. Like, yeah. so, like I get it, but I'd rather be in a Champions League. And I feel like now the like shift started to go that way as well, mm. just because people are sitting out more often because the internationals are less important because they're played more often. Mm. I think it all sort of goes hand in hand, sort of what we're saying here, where like because it's so polluted of so many games, and because now like club football is such a higher level in terms of you're almost playing with an international team mm. every time you go there at such a high level of football. Maybe it's starting to take away from what the internationals had, which was special because friendlies were special, like incredibly special before. Oh, yeah. But because you've got now got the qualifiers and you've got the Nations League, then you've got like the CONCAF, CONCAF Nations English League American and you've got one, yeah. like constantly going out for these like Mickey Mouse trophies almost. Yeah. It takes away from the major tournaments, takes away from international football in general and it mm. feels like because and as well because of club football how much football you're playing how much you train it feels like you're never gonna get a full eleven you're never gonna get the, yeah, the no. real team out there like we're missing Messi I know they're both old now but Messi and Ronaldo you're not in an international break it feels like wait they're not <laughs> like they're not playing international break yeah. like, I get they're in the camps and stuff but still like mm. I yeah it just there's, just, weird. there's just too many games at the moment just in the leagues and maybe it's just some of the players saying look after this season's done. I've got the Euros, and, I'm gonna, and then after the Euros are done, I got back maybe in. like a week, two weeks, and then back into the season. Yeah. Got to get through the whole season, and then my my first proper rest won't be until the end of next season. Yeah, so and then I've got a World Cup to come up. Exactly, that. so I may as well use this opportunity. Friendlies, it won't mean yeah. much to go away, go with you know the family or, and whatever. Just you know, like just because yeah. it's it's ridiculous the amount of like. Football, they have to play these days. Oh, it's ridiculous. Really Especially Premier League players. Like, Bundesliga have, like, one cup competition. And, yeah. And they have that massive um, Christmas break as yeah. well. And that. even, I, th- I think I saw, th- I think I saw this on, like, TikTok or something. I think there's a game between, I think Spurs or Newcastle play 
Brentford on the last day of the season or something. Yeah. And then a couple of days later, they're in Australia playing a friendly. Like four or five days later. And it's they like, are too in Melbourne. They're playing yeah. in Melbourne. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, why? Like, this is they should be going away. Yeah, let the guys <laughs> go to you let know, them, Greece. Like, and none none of the big players will go, obviously. But still, yeah. like, but that doesn't... Let's come back know? to the, like, maybe this is a bit... I'm going a bit off topic now, a bit entitled. But, like, being an Australian fan and when these... Like, you, when you see the announcement of these clubs coming, like, oh, my God. Yeah. Manchester or Chelsea are coming or Crystal Palace like, or West Ham came last year. Yeah. But they end up putting out nobodies because they've finished yeah. the season like two weeks ago. Well, to be fair, Tottenham actually brought their... F- and Tottenham played, played and they, they played, played like their best 11. Yeah, and that, Son great, played, and Kulkowski played. Madison Bale was there played, yeah. from the signing. But West Ham, I think, uh, just in spurts, they... Yeah, they yeah. put like Johnson and Bar- like all these... Yeah. But like, it's the thing, like, it's a double edge in the fact that if you're going to put all these money-making things in, yeah. bring your squads and give the guys breaks so you can bring the squads. T- yeah, why, why have, Instead of why going from Australia it, to Hong Kong why is to... It like four or five days after... It's ridiculous. Like, I didn't realise that was actually a thing. I, I'm pretty sure. I saw, I saw be surprised. Like a post about it or something. Because you would be in international camps within two weeks of the season yeah. ending, Ashton. Yeah. Preparing for... Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's two weeks. Once the season's done, I think it's two weeks they like camp and then the yeah. Euros. Don't. And then, yeah, you've obviously got the month camp and then the Euros yeah. are... So it's ridiculous. Well, it helps us out in the podcast, at least, because we've got yeah. a lot of things to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> but the poor players, yeah, screwed up. But you know Too what? for them. But, I mean, it's just it's just a ridiculous sort of... Yeah. Money talks. Money yeah. talks, yeah. At least, we got, at least they delivered, though, because, again, I said this was prepared last week when it looked very bleak, these like yeah. these games. But, gee, they've delivered. I think we can oh. sort of touch it in general. A few of them, like, obviously, Italy played in... Um, the USA and won two mm. nil, and they won two one. I think the yeah, next game, Venezuela, Venezuela. And someone else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously the three three last night between Brazil and Spain. Mm. Boy, that's exciting. Game, those yeah. those teams are very very good. Even the two England games were good. Good games as watchers. Yeah. yeah. Um, England were quite boring, but <laughs> <laughs> this is the second game they tried to do something yeah. with on the ball. Um, uh, obviously. Uh, Germany, yeah, that's it. Had Germany. two really good games. Germany looked very good. Really good games. Yeah. Common denominator. There's a, a certain Tony Kroos back in that in that starting lineup, and and two creative just wizards. He <laughs> he um, with those two guys in front of him are going to be that like, that dangerous. Germany team. My God, they got they got Wurz and Musiala. They got obviously Kroos coming back, yeah. but I think the biggest thing is that. Nagelsmann has a point to prove mm. to the Germany FA yeah. and to the rest of the world, the big club saying, if Germany aren't going to give me a contract, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Look what I'm doing with this team. These players. So I think I think he's the manager, not with the most pressure, but with like, what can you do? Like, let's see how good you really are yeah. right now. Uh, so And they're a, they're a dark horse. They've been disappointed the last sort of four years, interna- of yeah. even six years internationally. Even, They've yeah. not been... The Germany we know of, and ever since they won the World Cup, they're kind of they've been, they've been yeah. poor, right? Um, but there's there's some players there, right? Oh, there's some players. Like Musiala's <laughs> Musiala's playing at a level now where I guess we might as well touch on now. There's a lot of young players on that playing at a level that they feel like they're just thirty year olds, like Kobe mm. Manu. We've got Verts, Musiala, Andrik, Andrik Yamal, like yeah. incredible performances from guys that you think. Surely they'll just, you know, work, get your feet wet, you know, just judge mm. it. They're going in there scoring goals. And some of them are leading their national teams. Yeah. And, not, and, and not doing like, it at ease. Yeah. And they don't look uncomfortable in their exactly. positions. Yeah. Like, Kobe Marty's debut, man of the match. Man of the match. Florian yeah. Verts, eight-second goal from, like, way out. Andre scored two goals in two games for Brazil. One at the Bernabeu. Even Havertz's goals. Verts has bought a Musiala, which, it's, like, them two, are, they're going to be very exciting to watch. So. It's some exciting talent. Yeah, they're definitely a there. dark horse, I think. I think you got, you got to consider them. Got to, you have to. I don't know. If, if they're on, fun. they are. Fuck, they're going to be tough to stop. And that's gone. the thing. Stop. Like it's just defensively. And yeah, that's the thing because I think they're going to they're going to throw numbers for if Middlestat, who I touched on a few weeks ago, he actually scored. The other he day. he's played well. He's yeah. played very well. For, but as I said, he is literally a winger. He is yeah. his heat map is on the halfway line. He likes it up and down at left flank. Obviously, you got Kimmich who can help out as play some solidity around the pitch with yeah. he plays right back or in holding midfield. A diamond. I don't know how they're mm. going to configure that midfield, but I feel like that midfield is going to be so important because their fullbacks are going to get on. They're going to bomb on the fullbacks, yeah. high and wide wingers, creative players everywhere. It's just going to be so important that mm. Cruz, Kimmich, or if it's just Cruz or if it's just Kimmich, they have to hold it all up because it's going yeah. to be a German team we're not really used to. It's going to be very attacking. It's going to be like we're going to try and score three or four past you, and yep. 
the common theme of this podcast this year. I'm I love this style of football. That is just like we're going to score more than you. I don't care how many you score, we'll score one more. Yep. Girona do it, Leverkusen do it, Liverpool are doing it. There's a common denominator. All these teams they are winning games with mm. football. So hundred percent takes you to the international level because internationals can be very boring. <laughs> they can be very yeah. defensive and pragmatic. I feel like this Euro is, oof, but I'm here for it. Be good fun. I'm here, I'm here for Germany to just take it. Some, yeah, there. some really good football. And wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if we see. I don't think there's going to be like a like a real shock, like a country just come out of nowhere mm. kind of thing. But I think teams that like a Spain or like a Germany, where you think, yeah, they might get to like a, a round of sixteen. But yeah, they, they they might get knocked out. Probably will get knocked out. But I think I think I think Germany. I think they can reach the final. They could. I, and then I they think could. if everything goes right, I think you look. I mean, some of the players, like I mean, Neuer or Stein, whoever you want, take your pick. Like <laughs> two best t- in exactly. goalies in the world, probably. Would go at, at centre back? You've got your man at left back, yeah. middle starter who's flying at the minute. Terrible. That midfield with Cruz and Kimmich, and you got the attacking players. Ertz, just, Musiala, Havertz. You know, so it, it, a lot has to go well. Mm. A lot has to go right, but they got this. They got a team. And, and they got a manager that's he's looking he's looking focused. <laughs> he's looking I need to I need to this is my my chance to prove my worth in a way. Was at Leipzig, was good there. Yeah. Got the move to Bayern, maybe treated a bit unfairly. Has been linked to jobs like Tottenham and yeah. you know, maybe the Barca job he's been linked to, maybe the Liverpool job. Yeah. People saying he's probably not at that level. Now's his time to prove it. But they're saying you got Barca, you got Liverpool, you might have uh, Munich in there as well. Mm. So it sounds like maybe Man United are in there as well. As Leverkusen. Like Leverkusen has, w- have found a spot. Like There's going to be job openings. So mm. at any time if he d- he, the present. Yeah, if he if he busts this tournament, I think getting that top-tier job would just be very unlikely. Tough. Yeah, it wouldn't very happen, tough. I think. So. Oh, look at that storyline, Zalax. We could generally talk about this for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I'm trying to hold it as long as possible because I've, I've got so many ideas upstairs about the Euros in terms of Individual content as a podcast content. Got we're going so to like have so much fun. Yeah. We're going to have so much fun with the Euros. Yeah. Just going to hold our horses a little bit because we've got some exciting stuff in terms of league football. And that's where we'll lead our next part. We've got midfield done. We've got defence done. Goalkeepers done. We've gone to the front line. And normally I think, oh, this will be the fun part. This is where the, the great stuff happens. But yeah. I went looking through my right wingers and thought, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. This has probably been the... The one I've been least excited to do in a way. I, I put the first three in and then got depressed. Yeah, I thought the top, the top like four, top four I is kind of yeah. It's just how we've ordered it. Yeah, and then I think, I think from like from five, I think from five to ten, you could have your own. You like, have whatever. I think you could go from five from twenty to twenty almost because yeah. I had I have a lot of names written down. I should have put in put out from five to twenty. You could almost order them whichever mm. way you want because the drop off I think is like. Incredible. I think there's a lot of talent. They're just not playing great. <laughs> They're not playing great. Haven't performed for long enough. Haven't like still rough raw talent. Yeah. So it's so hard to order them. Injury, like yeah, injuries, it's hard, availability. So. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. So from ten to five, we're gonna have a lot of fun. I think. Yeah, so the I mean, that that's just a great intro. Yeah. To it, you know, like what it, <laughs> expect the worst, and then early out from here, right? <laughs> really up in this segment here. Really but talking so, about the segment. But I'm still. I'm. I'm. I, like I think I think this is the best I could have done. Absolutely, I, I, I don't think I would change anything to be honest. So. Give me your, your number ten, and here you go. So my number there. ten is uh, Dembele. Right, yeah, got him number ten. Um, I put him again. I I don't necessarily rate him as highly as some others might. Mm. Like I would have probably Elise, Neto, these kind of players in ahead of him because I think their ceiling is just ridiculous, and I mm. think in the best league in the world, they're. You know, they're playing yeah, brilliant yeah. for their yeah. respective teams. Also, Pulisic was very close to making it, yeah. but I just I just I just didn't think America. Yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just for America, but I just yeah. didn't think he was just not there just yet. Not there yet. Not there yeah. yet. Um but Dembele's had you know, despite that he has had good moments for France, yeah. good moments at Barca at times. Obviously the injuries haven't helped, but he had that unbelievable season at Dortmund, which was a History years ago, right? <laughs> but again, he's when he's fit and playing, he does have that pace and he's direct. Yeah. But you know, he's, he has. I feel like the role of a winger has changed. It, it yeah. used to be a, a provider, and goals would obviously mean a hell of a lot. But they mean a lot more now. I feel like you need to be a goal scorer as yeah. a winger these days. 
especially like the, the front, like the first four or yeah, five that we've crazy. got. Um, <laughs> and he's only got like one goal this season. Yeah. You know, but he does provide assists and he does whip in some good balls to the box. So, again, injuries have hurt him, but, you know, he's still – you can't deny his talent. Yeah, say, that's the best so. thing. That's the best way to put it. He's got talent. Um, yeah. I have Cole Palmer at number 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Still because – okay. Oh. On form, probably, you yeah, know, top – Seven, yeah. top six, I think. Yeah. But it's still for me a bit unproven. And I think he's more yeah. of a number 10. Yeah. That's where okay. I said I come from. Okay. In my mind, I was like, do I want to add him? Because I was like, with full forward, I put him at number 10, right? 10 mm. list. And I still reckon Cole Palmer's number 10 that's been forced out. Why? Because his team is not good, basically. Mm. Which is sort of harsh on him because he could, even then, my number, I like my number eight, number seven. So maybe he goes high as nine on my list. Maybe mm. I'm being really harsh on him. But yeah, it's still unproven in terms yeah. of like, yeah, it's a good six months. A great, a great six months, and deserves England corps and deserves to be amongst the international, international squad. Yeah. Should still probably be at City. Let's be honest. But I want to see what he can do next year. If he get if he moves yeah. inside to that number ten, does he become an out and out winger? Then I can really judge what he's all about. But yeah. this season, like just ridiculous. This single single handedly, oh, yeah, that's that. Sing, yeah. Basically, single handedly, yeah. Chelsea's yeah. best player alongside some. Effort in Inshallah from Conor Gallagher, basically. <laughs> That's what it felt like with Chelsea this season. He's been the constant output, the constant like bit of quality. And Poch has relied on him. He scored some big goals. That Luton game, they were bad, but he was, he was incredible. Yeah. And I think that's one of the games that sticks in my mind. And maybe uh, one that should put him up a little bit higher. But I feel like just because of the short time span, because he's not, for me, in my mind, number a right wing, I think he's number 10. Mm. Um, and because I think, some of these players have been around and established themselves a little bit longer and have had equal or close to seasons. I've got number 10 at the moment. Fair enough, fair enough. There you go. I see him as a 10. Shock. That's interesting. I see him as a 10. Yeah. I can see him going down the middle in the future. Yeah, in the future. Yeah, in the behind yeah. a, a big striker, not like yeah. a running behind track, like a big hold-up yeah, player. Yeah, because his passing is yeah. incredible. So, yeah. Uh, my number nine is Leroy Sano. You got him in? I've got him in, yeah. It's been... <laughs> I've, I've, I think I've been his biggest, biggest critic, to be honest. I've been, I've been on him every week. Yeah. You know, he's been a very frustrating season. Mm-hmm. I think that's the word to describe yeah. it. He's had moments that you go, like, wow, like he's had shots that have just skimmed past the, the post or the yeah. crossbar. Or he's had some really good finishes, but he's had other moments where you question his decision-making and some of his shots are tame and weak and it's like you're just shooting from 40 yards and it's P-rolling to the keeper. Um, but in previous years at City... First couple of years at Bayern, he wow. has been. He was really good. Incredible. He was really, really good. Um, you know, he's got a really good left foot on him. Mm. You know, he, defenders know that he's going to go to his left foot. He never uses his right, yeah. but he still finds a way to go into his left foot and can beat any fullback. Can can find ways of getting shots off mm. and creating chances. And um, you know, I, I just couldn't. It's a bit like Dembele. He's can't deny his talent. Yeah. But why I've got him over Dembele is because he's shown glimpses more moments of uh, how good he can be at City he was yeah. brilliant under Guardiola and then that Bayern he did start off pretty well but he's just kind of plateaued and been yeah. solid yeah. but it's been very it's been very frustrating watching him this year I'm not going to lie <laughs> <laughs> you and me both you almost made me change my mind on him but I don't have him in I've got Wisband Dembele at 9 yeah <sighs> Yeah, it's, a, it's tough to sort of fight their case. God. Like, it's got one goal. <laughs> I know, but it feels like for PSG, whenever he's there, they feel like they're a more complete side. Yeah, which is weird because you, the stats don't lie. I look at the stats and say, "Oh, okay, it's not very impressive." But it always feels like he's incredible for France. Yeah, it always feels like yeah. like when you need a clutch time moment, he's always going to supply. So he can pull something out the bag. Yeah. It's just a shame he's not consistent. Like I think mm. that's what's the fallback, and obviously injuries have done that to him, but. If he could do what he does on those odd Champions League nights when he does plays for France, five out of eight, yeah. five out of ten even games, I take him in the half the time. He's a, he's up there with some of the, like the best because yeah. he's so so quality. He's but good for France, you're right about that. He's good uh, he's for one of, he's one of those players. It's like um when Griezmann has his bad years, he's always incredible for France. It's yeah. like how, how do they like you know how mm. do they do it? But he obviously works so well for France, and he's a bit of a wizard when he when he gets in those positions, at edge of the box, corner of the box. Who is going to find the right pass or yep. a nice shot on goal? He's a proper creator of chances, what he is. He's a proper winger that can create stuff. Not really put much away or clinical or you know, whip the best balls in, but he always seems to 
get something going, you know, tick the tick it over and get something happening in the area. And that's what I think he's good at. It's if he can have that end product in terms of yeah. ability to finish the ball in the back of the net or put a pinpoint cross in more often. That's just holding him back. I think I've been impressed somewhat with his work at PSG considering I thought he could just disappear and get paid his paycheck and just sit on the yeah. bench. But he's been present. He's had some important moments. So at least he's somewhat nine. over his injuries, at least for this Hopefully, season. Anyway, yeah, so. go about that. Uh, my number eight is Leon Bailey. Yeah, like it, yep. Um, probably one of my favourite players to watch <laughs> in the Premier League, yep. to be honest. Just so quick, so explosive. Um, he's just a nightmare for opposition defences, <laughs> isn't he? I mean, he's just always attacking, always going at the fullback. And when he gets past the fullback, he'll pass it to Watkins or even get past the centre-back mm. and score. Um, Double-digit goals and assists in all comps this year, which is brilliant cause yeah. for, for Villa and... Sort of at times he's been on the bench because they got Diaby and some other guys that play. Yeah. Um, was good at Leverkusen, but whole new level at Villa and especially under Unai Emery. So he's I feel like I had to put him in. I want to. I was going a little bit, a little bit higher, but yep. I feel like he's just someone that he just has that little spark that they needed. Yep. Like hundred percent. They were they were sort of a yeah a mediocre team. Yeah, one direction team, and he's changed that this yep. year. Yeah. Obviously, talk about when I get to him. Yep. Um, I'm at number eight, Lamine Yamal. Yeah. Number eight. Yep. Um, again, similar to Cole Palmer, on four, probably a top three. <laughs> he's probably a top three at the top moment, Lamine Yamal. Four, yeah. yeah. In terms of his, he's carried Barca for the last month. I'm a bit of a fanboy for him now as well. I'm loving what he's doing. The fact he's like what, 16 still, I think. Yeah, he's 16. 17. Okay. Ridiculous. <laughs> probably going to a Euros. Man's um, on his L's. But then yep. scoring screamers. He goes scores uh, screamers at night and goes with exams next morning. It's just yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> why couldn't that be me? <laughs> sort of thing. Um, no, fair, but this guy, yeah, he's got he's got that ability with a board his feet just to create something. It's yeah. just like you can't back off him too much because you saw in the last game he'll cut in that left foot, score a belting goal, good sold on both feet, change of pace. Obviously, young, so that change of pace was really good. But I feel like the technical ability goes for a lot of these youngsters who play well in the. Um, the the, the international break here, so good at the board, his feet, like mm. trying to dispossess him if you can, you know. Um, him and Lewandowski are forming a nice little combination as well, which would be good to see how that one goes in the yep. future as well. But, gee, it's number eight with the potential to be number one in mm. could be two or three years. years. Yeah. So, it just um, depends how he's managed. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Barcelona, we can talk about that all day. <laughs> so but, yeah, it's a starting special, I feel like, yep. and it could be something, something very, very special this time next yep. year. Uh, number seven, this might, I reckon this will surprise you. I've got Jared Bowen at number seven. Right. Yeah, number seven. Seven. Obviously, he's played a lot as a striker this season. Yep. But in previous years, as a right winger, he's been yep. unbelievable. Yep. I mean, guiding West Ham to help them challenge the top six, top seven teams, mm. I think is just ridiculous considering where they were <laughs> pre-Moyes or yep. when Moyes came in. Yep. Relegation. You're bringing this guy from Hull City. No one expects much. Yeah. But he comes in and he's one of those players where I think Exactly like James Madison when he was at Leicester, where we go, could he do it at a top club? Is mm. he that good? I mm. think he'd just go in and fit in perfectly and yeah. his numbers wouldn't change or probably get better. Yeah. And he'd have more of an impact. Yeah. Versatile, obviously striker, right wing, probably put him out on the left and do the yeah, same. Yeah. His finishing is ridiculous. Um, and yeah, good luck trying to stop him for <laughs> 90 minutes. He's one of those as well, like when Liverpool played West Ham, he, he won't do too much because it's West Ham don't have a lot of the ball. Yeah. But he'll have one chance and score from a header like he did mm. against us. Or in the cup, th- three balls play to him and whack it in the top bins. Mm. So Tough play. Multi-dimensional play. Exactly. Yeah. I, just, I just love him. Yeah, it's, it's a play you want in your team. I just yeah, feel like it would be off the bench or starting. He's an absolute gun. Um, all right, my seven's Leon Bailey. Yep. Yeah. Again, I think, yeah, just adds a spark to Villa they never had. It felt like since he's come, him and, it was him and Diaby, to lesser extent, Diaby off the bench, stuff like that. But... They just add that little X factor that I feel like Villa needed. You know, that midfield I still love in terms of how it's rotational. We can do a bit of everything. But you need something to finish it off or create chances for Watkins or for themselves. And that's what Bailey's done this year. He's he's probably been their most... Well, Watkins has been their most consistent performer. But he's probably not f- far behind in terms of... He might not get many touches, but every touch he gets is so important for them. And yep. when you go and watch him or when you, your team's going against him, you think, don't get in the ball. If, Avoid him getting the ball because when he gets it, it's like, oh, what are we going to do now? Because yeah. you don't know what he's going to do. He'll skip past you, cut inside, cut around the outside. He can put a great ball into the air. He can be available in the box to put the ball in the back of the net. He's just he's got that 
the know-how, just to be in and around the box, whether it be that sort of central striker or in behind, it's almost like a false nine slash number 10. He almost plays as like a right backup striker to, to Watkins. He's almost his little buddy, you know, buddy there, just follows him around. He's not really as far out <coughs> wide in terms of an, an out-and-out flank, but he does a great job up there. And yep. Villa plays so many different styles of football. And when they go at teams, he's always there and always scoring goals. So 100%. Number Very nicely seven said. for me. Uh, six, I've got Lamine Yamal. Yeah, nice. I mean, pretty much everything you said. I mean, for a guy his age, it's just scary how good not only he is, but can be. I <laughs> yeah. mean, if he's managed well and if he can, like, keep his feet on the ground, I mean, he's going to be – he could be the best fight winger in the world yeah, easily. Genuinely. You know, so his finishing is brilliant. I mean, we've seen some of his goals for Barca this year. I mean, ridiculous. Um, yes. His dribbling is elite already. Yeah. Uh, you know, won a penalty – Overnight, yeah. which was just ridiculous, and got a standing ovation at, at the at Bernabeu, the Bernabeu at sixteen. <laughs> you know, man's preparing for his exams, yeah, yeah. you know, after the games. It's ridiculous, and um, for a Barca side that sort of started the season midway through the season, was struggling big time. Him and Gundogan were just stepping up and and playing unbelievable, and mm. you know, just imagine what he can do with a fully fit Barca side with a functioning Barca side around him. Mm. He's going to be scary good, and um. Yeah, you know, to to play that well against Brazil, who are considered one of the best, best in, world, in the world, yeah. in the world, is just he's going to be something incredible. Two hundred million that declined. Yeah, um, that, that came out today. Yeah, Jesus. And they might go again with the Mbappe selling Mbappe. Yeah, you never so know. Yeah, they'll be back at the door again. You never know. Border. I think they will reject no matter what. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is yeah, this is more the generation. This is like yeah. a, the face of the club type stuff. Um, yeah. right, my number six. I had to choose between two of the same clubs players. I went with Kudus number six. Okay. me. Yep. Because I still yep. well, he continue comes next, but I still reckon the other guy <laughs> is still a winger in my I, I don't care what everyone says. Again, has it done in a big lead as long? We know I do my bowling like yeah, my number, my number five. Like, oh, you do have me. Okay. Yeah, great. it sort of works that way. Because like, Bowen, I feel like we know we can do. Yeah. Kudos has had a great, what, half a year or three yep. quarters of a year. Can you look next year when they need to go again? Yep. Like, he hasn't been a part of it. European Cup winning team yet. So that's sort of the way I differentiate them. Both electric, both he could have had more of the X factor in terms of the turn of pace and the ability just to find the back of the net yep. wherever he wants it. But like you said with Bowen, I back him sort of nine out of ten times to put the ball in the back of the net. No matter mm. who's in front of him, no matter what keeper's in goal, no matter how bad his form is, that's why he's worked well as striker because he just finds a fine way to put the ball in the back of the net. And he yep. reminds me a bit of um <clears throat> Jota and Diaz in terms of he can rise up for a headed effort. And I think I rate that a lot yep. in your wingers that yep. they can go rise and put the ball back in there from a header. So um, it's such a little between these two guys. It's mm. sort of your preference. And I think Bowen's a little bit more of a, a resume and consistent form and versatility puts him above. So I got yep. Kudus six and Bowen five for me. That's, yeah, I, I thought of Kudus, but just, yeah. Well, when you have one of the guys I had last week in, you can't really add yeah, too many other yeah, players in this true, list. Yeah. Uh, my number five is Cole Palmer. Yeah, I've got five. Um, probably only him and Gusto, I'd say, have been the only positives to come out of that Chelsea yeah. playing squad. Um, I mean, he's been incredible. Some of his assists, his passing, his little flicks into Chukwemenka for the goal against Leicester in the mm. cup was just ridiculous. I don't think anyone at Chelsea could have done that besides him. Um, you know, he has like sixteen goals, twelve assists. Yeah, you know, in a Chelsea side that is probably. One of, if not the worst, Chelsea side that we've seen. Ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That we've seen, which is ridiculous. And, um, you know, for guys that should just come in and have the impact. Started off the season on the bench, had to w find his way, work his way into the starting 11, prove himself. And just, he has that bit of arrogance about him. A bit, yeah. bit of, you know, which some opposition fans might hate, but we I like love it. it. We like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. You know, yeah. why not? So, um, yeah, I mean, he's been unbelievable. He'll, should be going to the Euros and probably even probably won't start because you got Saka out there yeah. and if you want to play Foden out there, whoever. Yeah. Um, but should definitely feature coming off the bench for sure. Hundred percent. Um. All right. My, oh, you know, you're number four. Go. I, I'll I, do, I right. two. My four is Rodrigo. Rodrigo four. four. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, like, obviously, I had when we did the best player eighteen to yeah. 30, I had obviously him over Saka, but I just think. I think Saka's a bit higher up, but I just think Rodrigo this year, not that he's declined, but he's played a lot more as a centre forward, which I think has sort of, we haven't been able to see his real sort of potential mm. as a right winger. Yeah. And we've seen it a couple of times, like against 
Barca when they won four, and he was playing more a bit out wide, and he was he was blistering with his pace. He mm. was running at defenders, um, knows how to score goals, and yeah. still having a good year with his goals and assists. Yeah, um, you know he's only twenty three. Actually, trusts him. Always plays, mm. never injured. Um, he's still got a lot of improving to do, mm. development, but yeah. that'll come. Um, and he's had big moments already. Average the goal against City, the header, yeah. you know, a couple of other goals, and he's yeah, he's been brilliant. So yeah, all right, my four. Oh God, you're gonna hate me for this. I've got Messi at four, so not. Oh, oh. <laughs> is that is that a bad call for me? No, I I just I just don't have him in. Oh, he's not in. <laughs> okay. He what he was in my top five originally, but then I was like, yeah, I know he's not playing in Europe. You know? But he has just breezed on the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. He's still scoring in the MLS. I know it's, uh, it's going to come back to that whole Ronaldo debate we had when there's all four of us. Like, I still, <clears throat> I feel like you can't not have the top five with not him in it. As much mm. as I'm a Ronaldo guy, I feel like you still put him in there. Maybe this time next year it changes. But if you still put him in that PSG team, he still probably scores 25 goals. Yeah, that's that's where I'm coming from. So Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. It's either going to two ways. People are like, why are you putting him in this list or why have you not put him number one? That's probably no, I'm going to hate no, you. No, I, 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 I originally had him in. So There's three players right now who are playing the big leagues who are playing at a high level and as such, they go ahead. But yeah. in terms of the rest, I still think he clears the rest quite easily. It's That's the thing. I don't I don't care what league he's in. If similar with an old thing a few a few months ago and I was talking about that, to score goals, to score goals, you still need to put the ball in the back of the net and he's doing that and he's... Taking the mick with the, the MLS, yeah. which is ob- makes sense. I just feel like, yeah, if I'm taking, if you got Bowen, Caduce, and Messi in front of me, obviously I'm taking Messi, right? And that's yeah. sort of where I came to yeah. my thought with this. Whereas uh, my other three ahead of him, if I had them in front of me, I'm probably thinking I'll take them because they're younger and still playing in the big leagues. So that's sort of how I came about. Yeah. That's why he's not number one. I know no, for many good, people that's a good number way one. Of, um, explaining. And I know people would also say not even in the list because not in Europe, but. I still need to give the man some credit. He's yeah. number four for oh, me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, well explained. So. There you go. There's my there's my TED oh, talk. No, and Messi <laughs> number four, not number one or number ten. Uh, number <laughs> three, I have Arsenal fans. Just gonna hate. I got Saka. Number three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, they just they've, they've clicked off. There we time. go. Yeah. It's but um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, like for years now. I mean, the numbers don't lie. He's been unbelievable. You know, he's yeah. obviously start off as as a left back. He's he's versatile in that way. He, but he's now solidified himself as one of the best right wingers in the world. And, um, you know, this isn't a knock on Saka to not have him behind Salah. It's just <laughs> the guy that I've got second, I just think is, is ridiculous at the moment yeah. and has been for a while. And, I mean, his stats are, are brilliant. I think he's got almost 30 goal contributions. Ridiculous, yeah. I think it's pretty close. And he's been one of England's best players. I think he's won, like, England. He won play of the year. Yeah, he won play of the year. Like you know, yeah. which is ridiculous. So, yeah, he's been unbelievable. I rate him so highly. He's, yeah. I mean, he's, he's world class. Yeah. yeah, he is. So simple. Um, yeah. I mean, there's nothing else. Personal to say. preferences exactly, when it comes to these yeah. guys. I think. Yeah. Um, it comes to mind again. I also had Rodrigo ahead of Saka in my yeah. under what are we went zero eighteen or thirty one list. But yeah. same with saying you. I don't have to talk much about it. Rodrigo's third for me. I still prefer him over Saka, but he hasn't had a great great her year. Saka has been ridiculous in an. People were questioning him over Christmas time if he could do it. I questioned him. So yep. I put it on to him and Erdogan. I'm like, can you turn this team around? They've absolutely performed at a high level. Scores against big teams, scores against small teams, scores when they need it, scores when they don't need it. He does it like, like second to it all. Whereas Rodrigo, I feel like he's, like I said, he's been a bit out of position. Mm. It's all been about Bellingham centric. It's been a lack of a focal and number nine yeah. as well. So it all sort of adjusts. Even Vinny's had a tough year this year. You yeah. can say. But he sort of turns like both it around. Both I reckon, big time. Exactly. We, I think probably the best striker to play with yeah. in terms of a teammate striker. I think most people would pick like a Benzema, you know, to facilitate and to score. So it's always tough to adjust. I think he's adjusted worse than Vinicius, and that's why I've just got him a bit lower. But yeah. he still could go on to win a league, a Champions League, and a um, yeah. Super Copa. So I'm you can't really complain with that. Exactly, yeah. Um, you're number two. Uh, I got Phil Foden, yeah. number two. I mean, just the guy that can do everything on the pitch can – win games by himself like mm. we saw against United. I mean, he single-handedly <laughs> won them that game with just two unbelievable goals. And he's a, just a ridiculous talent that I think now we're just starting to see emerge because he's had to bide his time yeah. with De Bruyne and Mares and Bernardo Silva and all these guys playing ahead. And yeah. that's not you know, it's nothing bad. Not a knock it's on just, him. Exactly, yeah. it's not a knock on him. And 
Now he's got the opportunity to consistently play. Mm. And, you know, if City win the league, he's he's the player of the year, in my opinion. Yeah. He's been their best, most consistent player, yes. along with Bernardo Silva. But I just think this guy's won them games more often by himself. And, um, you know, no matter how good or bad he's playing, he'll always be a threat. We saw it against Brentford with the hat <laughs> yeah. trick. Obviously, the United game, Liverpool, he was a constant threat, you know. Mm. And and just which probably pipped it for me. I know it's harsh harsh to sort of judge off one game, but Liverpool, Man City, Foden was causing a lot of problems to Joe yeah. Gomez. But I think against Arsenal, Joe Gomez did quite well on Saka two out of the three times. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I just think Foden's just a, a little bit harder to defend in a way. Mm. Not a knock on Saka, obviously, but I just think yeah, just he's just unbelievable, Phil Foden. Phil Foden and can play anywhere for like cause the fun. Yeah, that sort of exactly. three positions there: ten left wing, right wing. Exactly. Yeah, I have Saka too. Sort of said yeah. it before. I think he's been more consistent performer this year, and his output is ridiculous. ridiculous two yeah. seasons now back to back with a ridiculous output. Um, that leads number one being Anthony. <laughs> oh God, oh. The cat's on the left foot. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, it's Mo Salah. Obviously, Egyptian king Salah. himself, the the king, the yeah. one and only, <laughs> Mister Inevitable. He's yeah. What can you say? Ever Mo since twenty seventeen, since he's joined, he's people have always. Wanted him to fail, wanted him to have that season yeah. where he's just dropped off a cliff and he never has. No. He's just gotten better and better. And a couple of years ago, he was probably the best player in the, in the world. Yeah. You know, before AFCON, when we we're going for the quad, he was scoring goals left, right, and center. He was impossible to stop. And um, for me, I just think he's the best right winger in Premier League history. I don't know if that's just me being with my Liverpool hat on, but I just think it's hard. To find someone that has had the impact on a football club consistently for what seven years? I mean, eight years. I mean, it's it, it's been ridiculous. Six, seven years. It's been ridiculous. So it can go in his favor against his favor because he's only been here well, only <coughs> for seven years. Mm. But I think his moments in seven years has been greater than any right winger or right or even wingers' moments mm. in their whole Premier League careers mm. and stuff. Like he has so many moments. Like so many game changing, whether it's in the Champions League, whether yep. it's in the Premier League and Cups. And he doesn't shy away from big games either. Like, yeah, no. A lot of these big time players come can just go disappearing a bit in Cups, and he's always there in those big Cup final games, those big yep. games. And <laughs> left backs have been terrorised for, oh, for years on years. Yeah. Like, I think every left back, not, we took some massive names Cancelo, Shaw, you know, some really respected high quality like names mm. of world football but even like he always has a great time against Arsenal because Zinchenko's probably not the best defender but still a highly regarded left back you know yep. and no one's ever had a great day against Mo Salah yep. like and that's probably the greatest compliment you can give to him like, mm. he's I keep saying it's De Bruyne in his era and De Bruyne might just edge it but to fit like to be amongst Kevin De Bruyne, we might get mm. down as the best midfielder exactly. in Premier League history. It says a lot where he's probably is the best winger in Premier League history as well. Yeah, Ridiculous. 100%. There we go. The list. There's our top tens. Then run through list. one Good more list. time. So I've got Dembele at 10, Sane at 9, Bailey at 8, Jad Bowen at 7, Yamal at 6, Palmer at 5, Rodrigo at 4, Saka at 3, Foden at 2, and Mohamed Salah, number 1. I went Palmer 10, Dembele 9, Yamal 8. Seven was Leon Bailey, six Mario Kudus, uh, five Jared Bowen, four Leo Messi, three Rodrigo, two Bakar Saka, and number one the Egyptian King. Good list, mate. Great Good list. list. Good list. Um, Got, again, can't can't argue any of them. I don't feel like it. You, you guess the that, point that Messi one. Yeah, I, looking back at it now, I probably should have put him in. I had him in originally, but I just thought it's just hard. Cause he's not in Europe, and it is, it's a hard job. I'm not. I don't. I haven't watched the guy since. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I might see the occasional Insta post <laughs> glazing him of an, an insane, you know, dummy against drops the, just Nashville an American defender. Yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I did my best of just like yeah. playing my cards right, putting him in the middle, so it's not the top, it's not not yeah. in the team, just like just there. Yeah, Cause we know yeah. the Messi fans come for the, you know, they come for you <laughs> if you don't do, if you don't respect them enough. Yeah. Um, all right, from one list to another, um, because uh, as I expected, we did waffle. Um, <laughs> so we've got two more lists to finish up the episode this week Related around One related to the club season One related to the um, internationals coming up Starting off with five Once again, welcome to Preston Education <laughs> Corner For this week um, Back again Back again with five storylines <coughs> We're excited to see coming in the season Once again, subjective lists yep. There's no right or wrong answers here It's There's a bit of fun 
just you've got the pen in your hand to write yep. a story for the right rest away. of the season. Yep. Um, I just didn't actually do every league this time around because I had a few I to definitely secure uh, in there, but I got most leagues covered. Uh, off. I did. Just we can trust you to do fun. that. Bit of fun. Yeah, um, fun I'll get us kicked off yep. with an obvious one because I'm sure I'm sure you have it as well. My um, number one one would be Jurgen Klopp to secure his fairy tale finish, being a Europa League mm-hmm. trophy and a Premier League trophy to add to make a treble. Mock it all you want, but it's still yep. a treble. Or even just, I guess the fair tale will just be, you know, the Premier League to finish it off. But that would be something, it, it, it's still on itself, but we one of the biggest stories in terms of the, the modern Premier League in terms of <coughs> the impact he's had and to go out and that might would probably be the right way to go out. Mm. It just feel wrong if he didn't leave with another trophy outside of a Carabao Cup. He yeah. merits at least two trophies, probably a third. But with this season, with the style of football, and because my own personal investment in some of the players and the style of football, <coughs> the investment I've made it, with this podcast in terms of understanding what Liverpool were doing because people were like, Liverpool, hey, is this really going to... Mm. You know, after a few questionable years, it'd just be for me, for this club, for you. For the, like, it, it feel like mm. a proper... Like full stop to end the story off for them. Jeez, if, if we only end up with the Carabao, I might be on fucking suicide watch for the Euros. <laughs> I might not be here, you know. Just, we'll keep we'll, we'll keep pinned down to the the, <laughs> yeah. the couch and keep inside. I, I had a feeling you would you would go yeah. with that, so I, I went with something different. I just went with um, will Aston Villa get Champions League football? Yeah, I like it. Obviously, it's top top five, top five I believe, now. yeah, which is pretty much guaranteed. So, you know, with obviously the Conference League, they've got how, being heavy favourites now that they knocked Ajax <laughs> yeah. out. How much? Obviously, they'll put all that, all their effort into that. Mm. But obviously, you've got the opportunity to just solidify in the Premier League. You got Spurs three points off, and United, I think nine, with both with game in hands. Yeah, can you just continue to find ways to just keep building up the points, mm. keep putting pressure on them? And it's going to be hard because they've picked up a couple of injuries. Yep, you know, I think. Um, McGinn, is it McGinn? They McGinn's got the red suspended. Card. He'll be out for still a yeah. little bit. Obviously, Kamara. I was out. Um, so, Watkins, Louise, Bailey, they're the ones I'm looking to. They've been so good all year. Yeah. In this final, you know, 10 games in the Prem and what you've got of the Conference League, because you haven't really been involved in top four battles, maybe yeah. other clubs like yeah. Leverkusen, but the Premier League's different. Can you keep that level up? Yeah. So... Do you have the bottle? Do you have the bottle? Does it, you know, and we have it. Yes, does, does, does he have, have it? it? So I hope they do. They deserve it. They deserve it this year. It's just going to be game management and sort of how Emery can... Squad rotation squad, so. and stuff like that, yeah. Yep. Um, all right, in my second one, heads myself over to Spain. I've got, can Real Madrid top off... And I'm being very top half heavy, but <laughs> um, can Real Madrid top off an impressive season with a Champions League before yeah. Mbappe arrives? Yeah. Because with Andre and Mbappe the next season, you're almost assured that almost... <laughs> Walk one of the yeah, trophies. It's got to be coming home. Like, I mean. <laughs> but can they win one more without him there? Yeah. Can it add, help add to Vinicius' legacy? Because I watch a f- like a, a, one of the most informative TikToks of all time. I mean, this guy was talking about Mbappe as being already one of the top ten players ever, yeah. and he was like, he was making a good case. But he's like, the one thing that always prevent him was he never won a ch- he never won a Champions League at PSG, and obviously he'll win some at Real Madrid. But if he doesn't win three or four at Real Madrid, it'll feel like he didn't quite. Get yeah. that done. Yeah. Because obviously he's got all the individual stats and he's got all the you know play and highlights to be a top ten player. And I think yeah. when he gave the examples, it's like, yeah, he probably is a top ten player, but still without a Champions League. Mm. And then I guess that sort of correlates over to you know, Vinicius in terms of he, making him a, you know, one of the top twenty, what, thirty players in the world. Can he win one more without Benzema there, without Ronaldo there, yeah. with an aging Cruz and Modric? Can those guys go out in a high as well in a Champions League final win as well? Can my prediction come true as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, there's so many people, you know, it's still, on, it's still, so, it's, you know. We're still riding that. But no, and Ancelotti as well. Can he further establish himself as like a top three now, yeah. a top four manager in the world within the Champions League win? So yeah. it'll really be a great season for them if they can just grind up with all the injuries as well, if they can grind out a Champions League win as well. Yep, 100%. I'll head over to Spain and I've got, can you trust Atletico Madrid? Wow, I like that. So that is to the point. <laughs> to the point. Yeah. So their inconsistency has... Put them in a top four battle with Bilbao, who look Jeez. unbelievable at the yeah. moment with yeah. the Williams brothers yeah. are just going mental and the defence is really good. Solid. Um, you know, we know what they can do at their best. They knocked out Inter in the Champions League. They've beaten Real. They've got a point at the Bernabeu. That's their yeah. best. Yeah. They can they can take it to the best. But at their worst, they're a, they're a mid-table La Liga side, I think. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're shocking. Some of the 
the d- chances they miss and defensively they they become sloppy mm. and it's just a matter of they got a, a, a decent they got the better side of the Champions League. Yeah. They've got Dortmund. You know, can 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 you trust them to find a level of consistency where they're going to be competitive against an underdog like Dortmund? Mm. Can they, you know, can they keep in touch with Bilbao and not fall away in in the league? So it's just a matter of for me. Can they find a level of consistency which goes? I can trust this team. I know what I'm going to get. So that's the best one yet. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's a that's, that's a good <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Damn, yeah. yeah, it's going to be tough. For, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure about let it go anymore. That's the thing. Um, I've, yeah, can you can you uh, trust them? My faith is hit rock bottom. Worse with Come them. on, Simeon, prove us right. Yeah, we're now managing. Yeah, team. all these, all these <laughs> chad you up, mate. We chad you up. Um, I'm going to stay with in Spain because I had a second one in Spain, and we're going to cover all the big three here because I've got Ken Barcelona, similar to Real, end off Xavi's reign and encourage him to come back by making a great Champions League run. Potentially running Real Madrid to the final day in the Premier, yeah, in the Premier League in the La Liga. Can they go and push them for that? <clears throat> can they might not end in any trophies, but can they do enough that makes Xavi second guess his decision? Yeah, because Laporta still said the contract's still on the table. It's up to Xavi it keeps now. Coming up every yeah, like week, it always like, is there. Yeah, will Xavi stay? Will Xavi? Uh, we think he'll go, but as we keep saying, we can't imagine him anywhere else. Mm. So as such something's going to happen. Something's going to change, and he has to manage. I feel like this guy's got a footballing brain, so. Will them winning it or will them going to the, you know, maybe a final losing to a Madrid or a City or, you know, maybe them pushing Real to only being within three points of them? Is that enough yeah. to be like, firstly, one for the team shows they've got a bit of bottle, they've got a bit about them with all the injuries and all that's going on. Secondly, does it keep him like, okay, let me go one more time and see how I go again? And then he just keeps, keeps going on from there. Because yeah. it's gone from a really bad season to something that could be really special in terms of like, mm. Storylines, it could be a great story if they yeah, can yeah, pull a champion. Gone well out there, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Even in the league, I mean, they're still they're in, in touch, they're in reach. They're, they're playing much, much better. Yes. So, um, yep. Absolutely. So I'll head over to the Bundesliga. Yeah. And again, once again, Leverkusen, of course. Yeah. Can Leverkusen go undefeated for the entire Bundesliga Same season? As me. Same as me. <laughs> you know, obviously, still got the Europa League big favourites to at least progress to the final. Obviously, they got the toughest side of the draw, but still, you'd fancy them. Mm. In the, the DFB Pokal, which, I mean, there's no one left. They should breeze yeah. past that pretty comfortably. With all these games coming up, is it just going to be too much? Mm. Are they just going to drop one that you might not expect? <laughs> yeah. Or are, is this wave of momentum that they're on just too strong? And just some of their players are just too at, at a level where you just can't, can't stop them for 90 minutes. Might be able to stop them for a half or 60, yeah. but... As we've seen in the Europa League, Karabag stopped them for what, 80, 85? Yeah. And, then and then they just bang. So, I had it as well. I had it as well. Because yeah. it's going to get interesting when the title race sort of rounds itself up and you have yeah. three or four, hopefully three or four games to go. Mm. And they've got Europa League. Do they continue to push for the lead to try yeah. and get that, you know, crack record? And mm. what happens if you go down 2 0 and it's the second last game of the year? Do you want to keep pushing for that result? Because we said internationals and finals and stuff. I think the Pokal, I do. I think Europa League, if they get through the next round, I think they have the confidence after being a West Ham away, that mentality, they'll just keep rolling. Yep. It's just because they need all mentality thing. Once that league is either closer wrapped up or wrapped up, do they just switch off? Mm. That's the thing. I hope they just stay switched on, keep battering teams, yep. keep making these great comebacks, keep scoring late goals. Because mm. lately they've <sighs> been winning like... It's good later, Two, one, and one, later, like it's, yeah, and later and tighter and tighter. A little bit lucky here and there. Yeah. But will that just run out? Or is it just, yeah. I think the international break came at a great time oh, for them. Rest the Reset, legs. Reset. Let's just yeah. maybe look at a couple of things that we're, we're not doing right. Maybe yeah. defensively because they, they were conceding a little bit more sort of chances mm. and getting a bit lucky. But I think after the international break, I think if that first, the first couple, of, first one or two games, if they start off, I think it's just going to be a mountain to climb if you're versing them. We've got basically... 18 mm. games left I Nine in so, the league yeah. And like Two yeah. legs Two legs And a f- Yeah So yeah And a semi yeah. So basically yeah Like we're looking at 16, 18 games left Yep And you don't have to win them all Just draw a few of them just, Yeah exactly Just yep. so I can rub it Into Arsenal fans but face the players own curse Will it live on You know Don't oh, That should be another That's, that's, that's my that's secret storyline story There's a players own <laughs> curse Continue <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, I'm very excited for that as well, just to rub in Arsenal yeah. fans' faces as well. Yeah. Um, all right, so I had that as well. Yeah. And my final one, we probably have two more, but my yeah. final one will be in Italy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I wanted to say, can De Rossi secure Champions League Ooh. football? Can the great run continue? Yeah. Can the momentum, the good vibes continue at Roma? Will they continue to go on in the Europa League as well? You never know. But can yeah. they secure Champions League football? Get a top four spot. Either knock Bologna out or knock um, mm-hmm. Juventus out. We talked about it a bit last week, but I'm very excited what they're doing. And with Dabala, Pellegrini, Lukaku can find some form. Yep. That defence, it seems very, very slow at the moment. Can they go and do something very special? This would be a great, from 10th to 4th, mm. it would be a great turnaround mid-season. So that's why I was putting on a happy story out of it all, to be honest. Any any chance of them making Champions League through the Europa League, do you reckon? Do you give them any chance to beat Milan and then beat... Uh, I think, well, firstly, Milan's hard, but then yeah. once you've got, you've got like, the Liverpools and the Leverkusens in a final or semi, like, I can't see them getting past them. Mm. Do you think if they beat Milan, do you think all attention just focuses to the Europa League? It might be. Might be, yeah. Because it could be a too much of a mountain to climb to yeah. catch Bologna if they continue to yeah. fire and Juventus turn it around. Yep. Good time for Juventus having an international break as well, by the way, just to yeah. find their confidence. Yeah. So Your I've got, I've last got two, two. I've got two more. So I'll stay in Syria. I've got, will Juventus get dragged into a top yep. four battle? So they've still got a relatively decent gap. I think yeah. it's five points off Bologna. I think it's eight off Rome. Uh, yeah, I it's almost think. like a, just under So it's still a gap. relatively decent gap. Mm. Um, you know, the ma- fell off massively before the international break. And yeah. it, about teams that needed it and it came at a good time it came at a, a great, great time, time for them um, and I just think there's there's so many questions surrounding this team at the minute you know will Allegri even keep his job you know besides Bremer and, and Vlahovic who else do they have that quality of player or players that's going to yeah. step up and because these two are not going to be able to do it themselves no, to keep in the top four they're yeah. going to need others so um, you know it's going to be huge still a bit of a gap but if they come at Back off the international break and lose or drop points in their first one or two, I think it's it's ropes. <laughs> big time they're hanging yeah. on the ropes. So, and my last one, I've got uh, are PSG defensively good enough to cause chaos in the Champions wow. League? Wow, uh, you've had some belters yeah. to that. That's I had, a good I, one. I had fun with this one. Yeah, that was a good one. We know they're attacking players in obviously Mbappe is the star man. We've yeah. got Dembele, Ramos, um, Colin Wani, yep, but. Defensively, they got some. They got Donnarumma in goal. They got yeah. Hakimi at right back. Yeah, they Hakimi, they got some Kimpembe. They got some decent names, but as a unit, they've got the easier side of the Champions League draw. Yeah, I pr- they pretty much won league earn. I think. I think yeah, ten yeah, points yeah, clear yeah, or whatever. Clearly. They're pretty much. They're going to win that anyway. Um, but it's defensively. Wow. They're, they're going to create chances. They're going to score goals. Defensively, as a unit, they got the names. They got the individuals. But as a unit, are they good enough? Because whoever wins that li- that. Fixture exactly. makes the final almost. That is huge. P- the PSG Barca, whoever wins gonna that, beat Atletico, they'd be shoot. heavy favourites over Atletico or Dortmund. And especially how Atletico have matched up, particularly against Barca. I mean, they just lost three nils. Yeah, they got bad. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, uh, that's how random I said that. I didn't think, yeah, because then if Mbappe goes and wins that single handedly against Barca, they get through the same, they make a final, and Mbappe wins one mm. for PSG. That almost solidifies him as one of the greats mm. in terms of what he's done with that I team. I mean, it, it, they, would, they would be huge underdogs in the final. Oh, because absolutely. Because you'd, uh, like you'd expect it to be a Man City or Man Madrid. Man City or Madrid or even like even Bayern if they turn it somehow turn it yeah. around. You're reversing like a big boy. Like the, the, the definition of the big boys, like yeah. that they are they are the ones there. So yeah, but it'll be a story and a half. It's just though. a question mark. When things aren't going their way, can they just sit in for 15, 20 and, absorb. and just absorb a bit of pressure? And just defend as a unit. Do they have the bottle though? Because we, I mean, they they scored. I think the most goals in their group. I think they scored nine, but they conceded eight. Like, yeah. if you want to win the Champions League, you can't be conceding eight goals in the group. And mm. conceding four to Newcastle is. And that Newcastle game was not a exactly. Great team it was an all. injury yeah. riddle. Yeah. You know, Tanali. They had the whole thing with Tanali. Yeah. And, you know, so. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's one of the. That's that's. You know, I'm revoting. That's my favorite one of the day. Yeah. Your first one was. What was your first one again as well? I, I had good. um. I had Villa Champions League football. Next I had one? Leverkusen undefeated. I had Atletico. Atletico. And that was good Atletico. as well. So you had two bangers there. Mm-hmm. Well, two out of five for you. That's, yeah. just, that's Love impressive. It. <laughs> two heaters. Um, we'll end off this episode as we sort of started with in international football and just a discussion about three teams are looking, we're excited to look for, for in the upcoming major tournaments of the Copa America and the Euros. Have you done three teams from the Euros and three teams from. No, I did three oh, okay. in general. Okay. 
<laughs> I did you, can pick, you pick your best three. <laughs> you pick your best three. You, you, you um, outdid me. Well, that goes like half an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, All right. I'll kick us off then while you're shortening. Yeah. I'm going to go from the Copa America. I'm going to go USA. Yeah. The I host have, nation. I them, yeah. Um, they just won the CONCACAF, whatever the hell you pronounce it. Nations. Nations. Like, but it's still impressive. They beat yeah. Mexico, who I think are a very solid team. Great players at the moment. Like Tim Ream, Anthony Robinson's in the form of his life. Yeah. Talk about Pulisic and how great he's been recently. Looking for like a Winston McKennie to stand up. Joe Rayner, can they stand up? You know, these are big players that haven't quite taken that next step. McKennie had a few good games there for Juventus at the start of the season, but sort of yeah. tailed off a bit. But same as Gina Rayner as well. Gina Rayner's had some good games this season, but nowhere near because yeah. he's up now. Has at he Forest. Played for Forest? I don't think he's even played for Forest since <laughs> yeah. he joined them over the, um, the January period. But there's some players there. Host Nation as well. You know, Brazil are very, very good, but it doesn't feel like they're unbeatable. Yep. Argentina are very, very good as well, but the whole messy going to the MLS feels like he's sort of just taking a seat back and is not mm. really at the races. Can you get at these teams yep. while they're not at their strongest? You know, like, will Neymar be there for Brazil? I'm not, if he is, he's not going to be very fit. Like, yep. it just feels like there's an opportunity here. Obviously not saying they're going to win it, but there's an opportunity to create history, basically, at home, before the World Cup, before you're hosting your World Cup. Yeah. Kind of saying special here with the Copa America and, and really, you know... Submit yourself as a serious international site because right now it is still a bit memed. Yeah, America. A little bit, it's a bit yeah. like yeah, USA, whatever. Especially but their chance. And yeah, stuff fight like and win all that yeah. stuff. Like, <laughs> like show yourself. Well, if they can show a bit of that, you know. If you know. can find, you can win. You know, fair play. <laughs> You'll be day. going a long way <laughs> if you can fight and win. If you can so. win, we yeah, <laughs> yeah. go far. But, um, um, yeah, my first day. So I'll stick in the Copper Americas yeah. as well, and I will. I'll go with Argentina. I'll go with Argentina just yeah. because, obviously, I think. There's a lot of like questions that you could sort of make up. Mm. Is there a World Cup hangover? Yeah. Uh, but in particular, I'm looking at a guy like Latao Martinez. Yeah. A lot of people are saying he's not a big game player. His he's, he's numbers are just inflated in the Syria because of his team. Is he, is he going to prove him wrong? Is he a big game player? You know, how much impact will, will Messi have? And yeah. just, I think there's a lot of questions surrounding that team. Just how good are they actually going to mm. be this tournament? So, especially Latao Martinez. So. Especially after what happened in the Champions League as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. Come back time. Um, exactly. All right, my next two will keep myself in the Euro space. Um, my f- second one will be France. Nice, yep. For multiple reasons, maybe more to your, your sort of first point there, because of Mbappe. Because yeah. of whoever wins this Euros feels like wins the Ballon d'Or in terms of Bellingham or Mbappe. We sort of said that for a while now. Again, I've t- now this time of you know, that you know, statement I made, because... As well, if he wins this Euros again with France, does it help his case to be one of those you know top players of all time? You know, he's going to Real Madrid. We all assume does he go there on the back of a trophy as a kid? That you know, good vibe going. Yep. it's massive because it, basically, it, apparently, it's, it feels like it's England's to win or England's to lose. Sorry, like yeah, it feels like, it feels like they're the, made to they win. They have to win it. Hands yeah. already on the trophies and stuff. Can France go again and be like, you know, you know, get stuff? It's mm. we're, we're, we're the big boys here. It sort of feels like those two teams are destined to meet either in a semi or a final. Yep. But can France go the one step further and, and win it and yep. do it again, you know, winning Euros, you know, so close, winning the World Cup and two Euros in such a close proximity to each other goes to show you how yeah. much of a dangerous team this one was because it was disappointing the last Euros we didn't see them in a final because we all thought we'd yeah. see them in a final there yeah. as well, um, especially after the World Cup final. Even the World, World Cup final, for 80 minutes, they were they were shocking. They, just, they, they were awful. And they just had a moment. Yep, in Buffalo. And they could have had enough, another moment with yeah. Colombo scoring. They exactly. would have won the whole they could thing. have won it in 10 minutes. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, I'm just looking at this one here. Win it. Mbappe wins a Ballon d'Or. Yeah. This t- French team goes down as a dynasty in terms of two Euros and two World Cup finals and a World Cup final. Would you already have win. them as, as a dynasty? Would you I say? think I would, but would, you, it'd go this up. This would solidify. It would go up yeah. against the big, yep. like we're talking about the, the great international teams yep. they won this year. So 100%. Yep. that's my Very second nice. yep. team. Um, I had Germany, but I feel like I... We already we discussed them. Germany, We'd yeah, obviously yeah. like Nagelsmann and Cruz and Musel and Wurtz and all that. So I, I'm going to go with Spain. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Because we know their youngsters are re- there and ready to go. Yeah. They've got, you know, Pedri, obviously Gary's not going to play, unfortunately, but they've got Yamal and yeah. Williams on on the wing who was brilliant was against Brazil. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Um, I'm also, you know, I'm interested to see Grimaldo as well in a back yeah. four. How's yeah. he going to do in a back <laughs> yeah. four? Um, but just... Is the amount of games that they're going to play from now to the end of the Euros going to have a big effect on them? Because Yamal's going to play a lot for Barca. Yep. Um, obviously, Grimaldo's going to play pretty much every game. Rodri. You got, you got, obviously, Rodri's going to play. Uh, Williams will play for a game for Bill Bauer. Pe- Pedri will come back from injury. And, <laughs> and play. And play, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So, 
Um, it's just, and they've got a tough group as well. Group of death. They got, death. I think, Croatia and Italy in their group. Yeah, Croatia and Italy. So will they even get out of, of the group? Yeah, so, tough. Um, tough old one. I mean, with how good Croatia are in tournaments, you probably back them. Mm. And then Italy and Spain. You don't know what you're going to get from Italy. No, you and don't. And neither Spain because of the youngsters. Exactly. You don't know, so... Could have gone with Italy or and Spain, you know. Exactly. <laughs> well, that leads to my that, you perfectly segue oh. my next point, yeah. which is Italy, because yeah. I said at the start, defending champs missed missed the World Cup. Yeah, but you've got super. We've rambled on about these guys for so many months now. Demarco, De, De Lorenzo, Barella, Chiesa, yeah. Jorginho, all these players that have been massive for their clubs in the last five or six months. I labelled into as the best team in the world two weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> like uh, there is, and I'm. So firm believe it. there's a lot of quality in this Italian side, but in the final third, can they do anything? That's basically yeah. what it's going to come down to. Can they score goals in the final third? Can they be creative? Can they break down a low block? Can they break down a tennis center just trying to absorb some pressure and counter them? I don't know. Because if, if I'm Spain, as much as you can play in possession, you don't want to you know, give these guys a chance by, you know, exposing yourself too much to the back because I feel like they've got enough pace to get in behind a side Italy but if you, if you when you transition out of possession sit in a bit and lock down a bank of four with two in front of you I can't see Italy breaking down a, a low block or, yeah. or a back six so I'm so worried about what they can do in the final third because they've got so much defensive talent so much talent in terms of going forward defensively in terms of creating for yeah. full back or creating for centre half yep. um, great goalkeeper great leaders great midfield mm. The front line, we just don't know what we get. Who's, who's going to be the one? Yeah, he's going to be that guy again, like with last year. Is is it him? Is it him? Like, what are we going to see? I, I don't know exactly. what we're going to see. And again, group of death. If they go out in the group, they, if, I know it's a group of death, but not making mm. the World Cup and then getting knocked out of the group says a lot of bad who, things I about think this team. Out of them through Croatia, Spain, and Italy, whoever gets knocked out, I think less Croatia because I yeah. think Modric has come to yeah. the end. But I think if Spain or um, Italy, I think Italy are the one with the most pressure because that defense is, should be ready to go. It's just that's one of the great defenses. Yeah, that's Donny Demarco, yeah. De, like oh, De Laurentiis. Even like, Spain are a bit younger, so you know. I feel like it's a free hit for Croatia. Yeah, yeah Modric's sure. last yeah. tournament. Yeah. They're always great tournament teams. They've had a great era. Yeah, like, <laughs> and, it, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they somehow managed to top the group it, just because of the way I they play. I don't think it shock anyone. Yeah, you're not, you're they're not. sort of team. Who's your third and final um, team? I don't know where to stick with the Euros or go. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick. I'll stick with the Euros because yes. that's the main one. I, I was going to go Uruguay. Yeah, I'll but, that one. Um, but yeah, I'll stick with. I'm going to go with Portugal because their attacking players. I think. I think they've got the best set of attacking players yeah. in the world in yeah, terms no, of you got Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, Jota, Ronaldo, um, Liao. Joe Felix in there. Joe Felix. Like, that is an unbelievable array yeah. of just talent yeah. and players that can play in multiple positions. Mm. But it's just whether that defence and midfield is is just going to be able to hold up mm. for... Yeah. Because they're going to score They're going to score a lot of goals. Yeah. A lot of goals. But we saw it in, in the World Cup against a team like Morocco, Morocco. where they concede one... Stupid goal. Don't take me back. And it just puts all the pressure on, on the attack and they're rushing things and you got Delo shooting from miles oh, out yeah, and really Bernardo Silva's getting frustrated and yeah. then obviously there's so much talk around Ronaldo. How much is mm. he gonna be involved? <laughs> yeah. His last probably his last tournament last along with Messi. Is, yeah. So um uh, yeah, I mean they've got the, the talent in the front half to be the most dangerous attacking team in the world, I think. Mm. It's just gonna be Defensively, for 10, 15 minutes of the game, if they are getting caught on on the counter by, you know, a team that they should beat, yeah, can they just stop that one chance from happening? Mm. That stupid mistake. So, yeah, I mean, delo has been brilliant. Yeah, he's good enough for it. Yeah. They got Diaz. You know, they got they got good players there. Na- just, they had they had that international pedigree. That's the thing. Yeah, like like Pepe still amongst the the bloody yeah. international squad. That, like you've got to. Yeah. It's just their attacking players, I just think. And I think, just finishing off on that point, like, I still think the attacking players are ridiculous, but together sometimes they just struggle. Yeah. Like, does, like, yeah. It was, it was come back to the point, does Gonzalo Ramos, um, Gonzalo Ramos start playing in the middle, or does Jao Felix play in the middle? Mm. Who plays out wide? Does Ramos push out wide, or Felix push out wide? Does Bruno play off the right? It can be a bit, like, yeah. And it works out like how isn't great, is it? Yeah. It's just like, that's the thing, I think they've probably got the best talent. Attacking-wise, for sure. The pool yeah. of talent, but, 
when you put them all together, it just doesn't the jigsaw puzzle doesn't yeah. quite fix. But uh, it, it's coming towards the end of this era in yeah. a way because Fernandez is getting on, Silva's yeah. getting on, Ronaldo is getting on. Martinez hasn't lost with Portugal yet though. Yeah, yeah, true. They've got a record to keep. Yeah, exactly. So. No one's talked about them either. They could just slide under the radar. Exactly, they're there. another one. They could. They could. I think a lot of these Make teams quarters. could. It's just going to be. I think. I think injuries are going to play a massive yeah. factor. Who's going to have the least injuries? Who's going to be just fresh and just fit enough ready to go? So and classic, you know, tournament football. You, who who do you draw as well? Sometimes the yeah, luck of the exactly. draw. Who finishes second? The group that should finish first. Yeah. All this sort of stuff. Exactly. That's what we love about you. <laughs> tournament football is mm. all about international football. I'll tell you what, good mate. Oh, cannot it's wait. It's going to get. The closer we get to the Euros, the better this is going to get. The more exciting. Yeah, the more exciting. Yeah. The, the more segments we're going to have on yeah. it, which is just going to be it's awesome. Ridiculous. So, yeah. I've got to get my head down. I've got a lot to prepare for the <laughs> upcoming internationals. Um, thank you, Matt, for coming on. Oh, we're good. Uh, good time today. Despite no league football, look at us go. We've done well mm. there. Obviously, we've come <laughs> into the final stretch. So, the next nine weeks are going to be, you might see us Huge, slowly yeah. and slowly just zap energy out of us yeah. because it's going to be a long nine weeks of I mean, calm. We'll be I mean, we're just kicking it straight off this Sunday for <sighs> in Australia. It's going to be massive. Massive so. games. Yeah. They've got the, they, they got the um, Bayern Munich, Dortmund game, yeah. got Arsenal, Arsenal City. City. Yeah. Um, I think Atletico Bilbao play another top yeah, six side play, as well. Yeah. Obviously, how Juventus go. A lot, a lot to talk about. Lot. So next we're going to be cram everything in again once again. Yeah. But that's what we love it. That's what we love football yep. for. Um, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Let's get to 4.30. We got to 4.29. We lost a few. So come on, get, get us back up to 4.30 again. Don't, you know, use your unfollowed. <laughs> Cancelled. Um, let's get this one to 200 views as well. Come on, let's push this one after quite the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, five stars on Spotify. Make sure to share Spotify as well. Numbers are slightly growing on Spotify as well. It's much appreciated. And obviously, follow an Apple podcast and give a listen there. I'll see you next week on yep. Thursday. Yep. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you, you next week on Thursday. Also, join us on Monday. We're back for the casuals to wrap up all the Premier League action. And boy, that's going to be an interesting episode with City and Arsenal. <laughs> Until next time, guys. See you later.